You know, for anyone who's really followed HIV research, the idea of a cure, a real cure, has always felt like the ultimate destination. But what if I told you that scientists are actually working on tools right now to literally cut HIV out of our DNA? It sounds like something from science fiction, doesn't it? But it's not. It's happening. Okay, let's unpack this. Today, we're taking a deep dive into CRISPR-Cas. That's the uh, revolutionary gene editing tech that's been making headlines. And specifically, its potential to become a real HIV cure. Our mission here is simple, give you a shortcut to understanding this groundbreaking science, what the latest studies are showing, and importantly, what it all means for HIV care and yes, HIV lab testing. So in this deep dive, we'll cover uh, how these molecular scissors actually work against HIV. We'll look at the journey from lab tests to, well, early human trials. We'll also tackle the big challenges, the scientific hurdles, and then crucially, how this could reshape HIV lab testing. And finally, we'll look ahead, timelines, possibilities, how close are we, really? So to really get why everyone's so excited about CRISPR-Cas, let's break down how it works. People often call it molecular scissors, right? Yeah, that analogy is actually pretty good. It helps make it less uh, intimidating. But what's really amazing isn't just the cutting, it's the precision. It's programmable. Scientists design this special piece of RNA. Think of it like a genetic GPS. A GPS, okay. Right. It guides the Cas9 protein, that's the actual scissors, to the exact spot on the DNA they want to cut. In this case, it's the HIV DNA that's, you know, inserted itself into the person's own cells. Ah, the integrated DNA. Exactly. So Cas9 cuts it. Then the cell's own repair system kicks in. It tries to stitch the DNA back together. But often, because the viral sequence is gone or disrupted, the repair essentially knocks out the HIV gene. So it disables the virus right at the source. Pretty much. It stops it from being able to make more copies of itself. It's quite elegant, really. Okay, that makes sense. But HIV... It's notoriously tricky, isn't it? It hides. It gets into these reservoirs, right? Places like immune cells, lymph nodes, maybe even the brain, where current drugs can't fully clear it out. That's Scott on. Those reservoirs are the major barrier to a cure right now. Standard drugs suppress the virus in the blood really well, but they don't eliminate these hidden latent copies. So how do these CRISPR scissors get into those hitty spots? That seems like a huge challenge. It is. It's one of the biggest hurdles, actually. And that's where the delivery systems come in. You need to get the CRISPR components, the guide RNA, and the Cas9 enzyme inside those specific infected cells deep in the reservoirs. Like physically transport them there. Exactly. Researchers are using things like modified viruses, often AAVs, adeno-associated viruses, or sometimes lentiviruses. Think of them as tiny, harmless delivery trucks. Delivery trucks for genes. Okay. Right. They're engineered to carry the CRISPR payload and are good at getting into human cells. They can even be designed sometimes to target specific cell types. So the idea is these trucks bring the scissors right to where they're needed, even in those hard-to-reach reservoirs. Okay, the theory sounds incredible. Molecular scissors, GPS guidance, delivery trucks. It's amazing. But the big question is always, does it work? Has this actually shown results beyond the lab bench? Yeah, that's where it gets really exciting. The progress has been quite significant. So first, in the lab, in test tubes, in cultured human cells, CRISPR absolutely works. It successfully targets and removes the HIV genome. Yeah. And critically, once it's cut, the virus can't replicate. So proof of concept, check. Definitely. That was the essential first step, showing the mechanism is sound. And then the next step, moving into something more complex than cells in a dish. Right. Animal studies, mice, monkeys, yeah. models infected with HIV-like viruses. And yes, the technique has worked there too. It's reduced the viral load, sometimes even eliminated the virus from tissues in these animals. Wow. So it works in a living organism. It does, which is huge. It shows it can function within that complex biological environment. And it gives us vital information about delivery, about safety, about how effective it might be. Which brings us to the ultimate test, human trials. Is that happening? It is. We're there now. The first CRISPR-based therapy, specifically for HIV, called EBT-101, is in early human trials. EBT-101, uh, okay. Yeah. These initial trials are mainly focused on safety. Is it well-tolerated? What are the side effects? And a finding so far. Early data suggests it is safe, generally well-tolerated. Now, researchers are looking closely at effectiveness. Is it actually reducing the HIV reservoirs in these participants? And is it? Have we seen cures yet? Well, let's be clear. These first participants haven't been, you know, completely cured in the sense of total viral eradication. Not yet. But just getting to this stage, moving from theory in animals yeah. to treating actual people, that's a massive step forward. It really sets the stage for what comes next. 
Are there other ways CRISPR is being used against HIV, maybe not just cutting out the virus itself? Yes, absolutely. Another really interesting approach uses CRISPR to target something different, the CCR5 co-receptor. CCR5 yeah. rings a bell. Isn't that like a doorway HIV uses to get into cells? Exactly. It's a protein on some immune cells that HIV uses to infect them. If you can use CRISPR to knock out or disable the gene for CCR5, you essentially lock that door. The virus can't get in. Like the Berlin patient. Wasn't he cured after a bone marrow transplant from someone naturally missing CCR5? Precisely. Timothy Ray Brown. His case showed that blocking CCR5 could lead to a functional cure. But that bone marrow transplant is incredibly risky, really only suitable for people with certain cancers as well as HIV. Right, not something you could do for everyone. No. But CRISPR offers a potential way to achieve that same CCR5 knockout, that same resistance, uh, possibly without needing that dangerous transplant. It could be a safer way to get similar protection. That's fascinating. So multiple strategies using the same core technology. Yeah, it shows the versatility of the tool. It really is incredible to see this moving from concept to reality, even with the first steps in human trials. But OK, let's be realistic. Revolutionary tech always comes with challenges. Hurdles. What are the big obstacles here? Because CRISPR isn't magic, right? There must be concerns. Oh, absolutely. There are significant hurdles, and researchers are working hard on them. Probably the biggest one everyone talks about is off-target effects. Meaning the scissors cut in the wrong place. Exactly. The risk that CRISPR cuts the patient's DNA somewhere it's not supposed to, somewhere outside the HIV sequence. And those unintended cuts could, potentially, cause harmful mutations maybe disrupt important genes, or even theoretically increase cancer risk down the line. That sounds serious. How are they addressing that? They're constantly refining it, designing guide RNAs that are much more specific, improving the Cas9 enzyme itself to make it less likely to cut off target, better GPS systems, essentially. It's a right. huge area of safety research. Okay, so precision is key. What else? You mentioned delivery earlier. Right, the delivery problem. It's not just yep. getting CRISPR in, it's getting it everywhere it needs to go. HIV hides in so many different places, lymph nodes, gut, brain, various immune cells. Reaching all those reservoirs must be tough. Extremely. Finding a delivery method, those trucks we talked about, mm. that's safe, efficient, and can reach all these diverse tissues effectively, that's a massive logistical and biological challenge. We need to get it into enough cells and enough places to make a real difference. And what about our own bodies fighting back? Does the immune system cause problems? It can, yes. That's another hurdle. Potential immune responses. Our immune system is designed to spot foreign things. The Cas9 of protein usually comes from bacteria. Ah, so the body might see it as an invader. It might. It could attack the CRISPR components, reducing how well the therapy works, or clearing it too quickly, or even causing inflammation or other side effects. So researchers are looking at ways to make the CRISPR tools stealthier to the immune system, maybe using modified or humanized versions of Cas9. And then there's just the sheer scale of the problem, mm. the reservoir size. How many infected cells are we talking about? Millions, potentially spread across the body. And these latent reservoirs are very stable. So getting rid of all of them. It might take more than one shot. It might require repeated treatments or combining CRISPR with other things like therapies that wake up the latent virus or boost the immune system. It sounds like a multi-front war, not just one magic bullet. That's a good way to put it. But, you know, every experiment, every trial, even the ones that hit roadblocks, they teach us something. We learn, we adapt, we refine. We are definitely getting closer. That's reassuring. It sounds like progress is being made, even with these big challenges. So thinking about all this, what does it mean for the labs? For HIV testing, that's something directly relevant to our listeners. How does this potential cure change the testing landscape? That's a really important question. And the key thing is, HIV testing is definitely not going away. If anything, its role becomes even more critical, but perhaps evolves. So we'll still need the tests we have now. Absolutely. Established tests like viral load monitoring, measuring active virus in the blood, and sensitive HIV RNA tests will remain essential. Even if CRISPR works, you need to confirm it. You need to make sure the viral DNA is gone or inactive. And crucially, check for any viral rebound over time from reservoirs that might have been missed. So verifying the cure, essentially. Exactly. Monitoring success, ensuring durability, those standard tests are fundamental for that. But will we need new kinds of tests too? Tests specifically for gene editing? Yes, almost certainly. That's the second major point. We'll need new diagnostic tools tailored for this technology. Imagine tests that can actually measure if CRISPR successfully edited the genes in a patient's cells. Maybe using advanced sequencing to 
to look for the specific genetic changes. Like quality control for the gene editing itself. Precisely. And we'll also likely need ultra-sensitive tests that can distinguish between cells with edited HIV DNA versus unedited HIV DNA within those reservoirs. They could tell us how completely the treatment worked and if any risky residual virus remains. Wow, that's getting into really sophisticated molecular diagnostics. It is. It pushes lab testing further into personalized genomic medicine. And that leads to the third point. The role of labs might expand quite a bit. They could become central to validating these therapies before they're even approved. How so? Well, labs would be crucial for performing rigorous safety checks, verifying the on-target editing, extensively searching for off-target edits, confirming the edited cells are healthy and functioning correctly. They'd be on the front lines of ensuring these powerful new treatments are both safe and effective long-term. The role shifts from just diagnosis to active validation and quality assurance for gene therapies. So the bottom line is, as the science for a cure advances, the science of lab testing has to advance right alongside it. They're partners in this. Perfectly put. Accurate, innovative lab testing will be more vital than ever. Okay, so looking ahead then, with all this potential but also the challenges, what's a realistic view of the future? When might we actually see a CRISPR-based HIV cure become a reality for people? It's always tricky putting exact timelines on scientific breakthroughs, but we can think in phases. Short term, say the next uh, one to three years. Expect more human trials, more data on safety, finding the right doses, looking for those early signals of reservoir reduction, building the foundation. Okay, and then medium term. Medium term, maybe three to 10 years out. If the data stays positive, we could see experimental treatments offered to some patients, likely under carefully controlled conditions or expanded access programs. We'll also see improvements in delivery systems during this time, and probably more trials combining CRISPR with other approaches, maybe immune therapies, things like that. Trying to hit the virus from multiple angles. Exactly. Increasing the odds of success. And the ultimate goal, the one-time cure. That's the long-term vision. Ten years plus, maybe longer. The dream is that single treatment that clears HIV completely. A sterilizing cure, if we get there. That completely transforms everything. HIV goes from a chronic, manageable condition to something truly curable. That future. It still feels a way off, but the path seems clearer now than ever before. I agree. The progress is undeniable. Even if the timeline is still uncertain, we are definitely closer. So let's wrap this up. Where do we stand after this deep dive? CRISPR-Cas gene editing is, without doubt, one of the most exciting avenues towards a potential HIV cure. The technology can, in principle, remove the viral DNA block infection routes, and it's already being tested in people. Cautiously, yes, but it's happening. But we also have to acknowledge the hurdles, safety, especially off-target effects, the difficulty of delivery to all reservoirs, potential immune reactions. These still need solving. Right. And what's fascinating here, I think, is the shift it represents. Current HIV meds are life-saving. They manage the virus incredibly well. But CRISPR holds out hope for something fundamentally different, actual eradication, a cure. And connecting this back, HIV testing isn't becoming obsolete, it's becoming more specialized, more crucial. It's the tool that will verify safety, measure success, and guide us as these therapies develop. It remains absolutely central. Okay, here's a final thought to leave you with, something to really mull over. Think about how fast HIV treatment has changed. In just a few decades, it went from almost uniformly fatal to a condition people can live long lives with. Now, with CRISPR, what other diseases we currently think of as incurable genetic disorders, maybe other chronic infections might be next in line for this kind of revolutionary approach. And maybe even more profoundly, as we get better and better at editing our own genetic code. What kind of ethical questions does that raise? How do we navigate having that much control over our own biology? Something to think about.